today, in the smuggler's room, we are going to go back to our Mandalorian costumes. I know, yep. I know, I know, it's been a while. But that's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Miss Smuggler, or you can call me Carissa. And of course, welcome to the smuggler's room. So I know it's been way too long since we did a Mandalorian video, but we just have so many ideas in our heads and we want to do this and we want to do that. And, and let's be honest, our uh, hard deadline of Star Wars Celebration, it, it moved. So we could do some other things too, but we need to get back to it. So that's coming up. So let's go back in time two years, or maybe a little bit more, when we had decided to first make our Mando kits. Bought all the fabric, bought some patterns, and I just jumped right in and went to work. I began with my flight suit top, but this was all prior to actually sitting down and sketching the design and really thinking through those details. So now I have to revisit what I've started to see where I need to take it from here. I'll need a neck seal, I'll need to make the sleeves match Brian's, and just finish this top off. The good news is, I actually hadn't finished sewing up the sides and the arms, so I don't have to undo a ton of sewing before I can actually get started. Some words of wisdom, plan, plan, plan. Otherwise, you may end up with a Minoc mess of work to get through. Check out my new ironing pad. Now I don't have to get out my cumbersome ironing board every time that scares the dogs to death anytime I need to iron something. Okay, let's wait a second. I'm going to hold off on the next seal for now. I think it might make more sense to button up the other parts of this top and finish the vest before I go and make a mess of this collar. When I get all that other stuff done, I can take a look and see and make the determination if I need to do anything to this neck and maybe I just do a separate neck seal altogether. As you all know, the arm design of the Mando jumpsuit has double sleeve layering. Just like I did with Brian's, I'm going to do it one sleeve and faux-ing, is that a word? I'm gonna faux the half sleeve cuff. I love how the deco stitching turned out on Brian's, so I'm also going to repeat that on mine. So then we can be Twinkies. And because I like the look. So hindsight's always 2020, right? Well, I guess that kind of has a new meaning for us all, doesn't it? Anyway, I should have sewn the new portion of these sleeves to the old top prior to sewing up along the seam, if that makes sense. I really struggled with this portion of sewing, trying to get this scrunched up onto the sewing machine. Everything's a learning experience. This jumpsuit top is a little boxy. I wanted to take it in just a little bit, a little more form fitting. So I decided to add darts to the backside. And for reference, I uh, 
dug into my closet and found uh, this wrinkly button up just to see how it was done. It's time to start on the flak vest. And I just so happened to have a pattern that I got a couple years ago when we started this project that I can use as the basis for my vest. So this pattern calls for lining on the inside of the vest to finish it off nicely. What I'm going to do instead of a normal lining fabric is I've cut four pieces of each pattern instead of two of the fabric and two of my of a lining because this fabric is super stretchy so I don't want to pair it with something that's not stretchy. These tabs are used to match everything up before you sew. I do it two ways. Sometimes I do the double tab or the tab. I leave a piece of fabric or I forgot to cut these. I'm just gonna mark the fabric with my fabric chalk. I'll have to do that on every piece. I forget to do sometimes is clipping or trimming the seam edges to get rid of bulkiness. Here I'm notching out at the curve so that when you turn the piece right side out it'll actually lay flat without bunching. Now to the cap sleeves. My vest pattern doesn't include sleeves, but never fear. I'm gonna use the sleeve pattern from the shirt in this pattern pack, and then also use Brian's vest as my guide. I gotta admit, 
I turned the camera off and stopped recording for a while. I sewed the neck of this vest and then the sides, and of course I'd already sewn together the mid-back seams where I had decided to forego the zipper. Well, when I went to turn the vest outside in, the fabric wouldn't flip all the way through, and it looked like a gray sock puppet without eyes. By sewing up the middle back, I made it so I couldn't flip it correctly. I had to seam rip, flip it, re-sew it, and after that, I present to you the results. Now for final touches. I loved the baseball stitch or the double stitching detail that I put on Brian's vest. So I'm gonna repeat that on the front of mine. Twinkies. Star Wars Celebration is still over a year from now. So I want to make sure that these kits have some adjustability for give or take. On Brian's, I did this strapping on the sides, just looks dang cool. So that's how I'm going to detail out my vest as well. So I'm pretty sure you probably noticed that this vest isn't quite done as done can be. What happened? Well, what always happens, I guess. <laughs> Time just flies when you're having fun, right? Seriously, and in all honesty, I did run out of time. Sometimes you just go over some really, really, really large speed bumps, but that's okay. That's life, right? Also, I did run out of buckles to finish the side buckles, so that hung me up. I have to order some more, but we can do that next time when we make something out of nothing. So I started what? This jumpsuit box. This jumpsuit box. Oh my gosh. <laughs>